I feel like you guys know absolutely nothing about me. So I'm going to answer a bunch of your questions. I feel like this is a date. This being a date, I want you to tell me down below something cool about yourself. What do you love about yourself? What are you interested in? What makes you interesting? Let me know down below. Question number one comes from Logan. Answer me, Nicholas Light TV. D damn. Okay. Okay. Okay, Logan. Paul, what kind of woman is your type? <laughs> Who said I like women? I'm joking. Uh, I'm straight, okay? Sorry to all my my gay lads out there. This ain't Nicholas Gay TV, okay? I like a girl that is genuinely nice. She She's respectful of not just me, but herself and to others. Say we go out to dinner, she's respectful to the waiter. If the waitress is nice to me, she doesn't get an attitude at the waitress. I've actually had that happen. As far as titties and ass goes, you could be as flat as my death note. Honestly, I really don't care. As long as you have a nice face, I'm a face guy. If anime was real, who would you choose as your wife? <laughs> I like to see myself as a dominant man. So I can't do Makima because I feel like she'll bend me over and fuck me. Power is a little too crazy. I feel like she'd be the girl at the club that's the loudest, but everybody thinks is hot, but I think isn't. But I think power is hot, so that doesn't make sense. Your, your forger, she would be my waifu, cause she has that dark side, but she's also a sweetheart. And you need that balance in life. I need you to be evil enough to kill somebody for me, but I also need you to be like my, my, my cuddle partner. What's your favorite movie? So if we're talking franchises, if we're including franchises, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Number one, forever will be. It's so nostalgic for me. I could watch it anytime and quote it line for line. But if we're putting franchises aside and we're talking about movies, films on their own, Interstellar. And I think a close second would be Dune. I really love Dune. The new one with Timothy Chalamet, Shamalot, whatever the fuck his name is. He's just hot as fuck, man. God, I said I'm not Nicholas Gay TV, but... He makes me want to be. What is the ideal boob? Well, why did I pick this question? I dated girls with hentai titties, and then I dated ones that were like just the sidewalk. Like they were that flat. And honestly, I see no difference. So whatever. Whatever size is good for you, for you is good for me. Saitama, well, why am I picking these questions? Uh, you know, he's sarcastic. He's funny, naturally. Doesn't mean to be funny. He's hot. I, I'd smash. Yo, I'm a big fan, man. You should really check out ReZero. It's an amazing anime that I think you'd love. It has a lot to do with mental health. Also, when you get to react to Black Clover, bro, if one more person asks me about Black Clover, I swear to God. Is it not enough that I like the openings? ReZero and Black Clover are actually on top of my top five most wanting to watch animes. Animes. Black Clover got me with the openings. I love all the openings. It's my favorite anime opening anime and ReZero just has my attention because of what you just said mental health and it's my friend's favorite anime of all time so i figure i should give it a chance what anime animes are you most looking forward to for the 2023 season all right all right so we need attack on titan i miss it so much i feel like i mean it is my first anime experience i need it back and it's the final season part 48. Number two, One Punch Man season three. Knowing that MAPPA might be attached to it, that excites me. And Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen, I'm really excited to see what they do for season two. I love these characters and I miss it, especially with Panda coming back. I think there's something called solo leveling. And then there's the Genshin Impact anime. There's so many things I want to check out next year. We're going to check out new things, maybe some sports animes, who knows, but I definitely want to check out more stuff. Did you ever expect your anime reactions would do as good as they are doing and be able to make a living out of it? <laughs> no. I was praying that it would work because I was living in hell in my mind doing all of those K-pop reactions and Taylor Swift and Ariana Grande as much as I still listen to that music. Oh my god, it was torture, man. Like, going through different songs every single day, keeping one fan base happy. And you somewhat do that. I somewhat do that with anime. Like, I gotta make sure I keep different parts of the fan base happy. Like, the One Punch Man fans, the Attack on Titan fans, the Spy Family Chainsaw Man, the One Piece. Like, I have to make sure sometimes. But I, I stopped doing that. I started doing whatever the fuck I wanted to do, and it seems to be working. But I was praying it would work, and it turned out it did work, so... 
I love you guys. Thank you for saving my life. Did it hurt getting that butterfly neck tattoo? Because it's literally on your Adam's apple. Also, why is it there in the first place? Always was curious. It didn't hurt that much, surprisingly. It felt like I was shaving, you know? Like I had a razor blade and I was uh, going like this. I love butterflies and I, I, I feel so egotistical at times. I'm like, you know what? I need to change. I need to be reborn. And when I think of rebirth, I think of a butterfly. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna show everybody I'm changed. I'm gonna show everyone I'm different. I wanna be seen. I wanna be seen as, you remember that kid with the butterfly on his neck? Like nobody's gonna forget that motherfucker. So I said, you know, I'm gonna get it. And I got it. And here we are. When are the streams coming back? When I buy a house, because I got noise complaints for doing those streams. My videos are different because my videos, I could record for 20 minutes to an hour and that's fine. But my streams were different because it was like two hours, three hours, and it was on different days. And it was at awkward times because y'all are on different time zones and I had to work with that. But I have to wait till I get a house. All right, so 2023, Nicholas Light TV buys a house and gets back to streaming and taking over Twitch. And the We Are One Piece episodes are back. Is there an anime you thought was kind of boring? You know, you think I'd be afraid to say this because I might anger some people. But you think I care? There's one anime that I had a boring experience with at times, but in the end, really loved. Demon Slayer. There were times in that anime where I was like, why is this so loved? Like, I just don't get it. Like, I hear everybody talking about it. All my friends talk about it. Online, it's always trending. It's breaking movie sales. And I was sitting there like, it's good. It's all right. But then as it progressed, I understood. And I know it's very, not controversial, but debatable. But I actually really love it. I actually really appreciate it. I have fun with it. It's my Demon Slayer reactions and my Chainsaw Man reactions always get the dislikes. Always. Because I guess there's people in the anime community that see it as overhyped and over exaggerated like myself. But whatever. I, I enjoy it. Look, 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 look at my, look at this. I have, I have two Tanjiro's. I have a Rengoku and I have a Nezuko chan. And Chantaro, like, like, are you serious? My whole channel is basically off of Chantaro, and he's from Demon Slayer, but he's in every fucking anime now. Power was eating him on one of the episodes. Have you watched any anime just by yourself and not for channel? No. No, I have not. I mean, I've rewatched Attack on Titan two times. I've rewatched Demon Slayer. Um, I always rewatch the Chainsaw Man episodes. Chainsaw Man's like my... I feel like it's my personal favorite. I know it might sound crazy to some people like this guy's favorite animes are Attack on Titan and Chainsaw Man. He's such a mainstream little bitch. I understand, bro. I understand. I understand who I am in this fan base. It's like my friend. I'm a huge Kendrick Lamar fan. And he's like, oh, I like Kendrick Lamar, his swimming pool song or his humble song. And I'm like, those are like his most mainstream songs. Are you serious? So I understand you guys, okay? But those are mine. That's what I enjoy the most. And it will change. Maybe it will change over time. So, first tattoo. Why start to get in tattoos? Maybe some tattoos are meaning and explained. By the way, love your stuff. I love your stuff, Riku. First tattoo was this one. 1995. In case I forgot what year I was born. I was rapping at the time. And I had a show with my friend Travis in LA. It was our first big trip. We went to LA. And I choked on stage, by the way. When my set was to perform, I choked. And I, yeah, I lived with that scar forever. I was like a chubby little kid. My face was more red than it normally is. Like, you know how red my fucking face gets? On that stage, I looked as red as this. But I wanted to be edgy. And I was like 17. And I got the tattoo. And then I got home. And my dad was like, you didn't have to hide it. It's a tattoo. Who cares? And yeah, that's my first tattoo. As far as meaning goes... I'm not like the believer that you got to get a tattoo because of its meaning. You have to have a meaning for it. I just get whatever looks cool. Like you think I got this alien head because there's a meaning because I'm an extraterrestrial and I believe in intergalactic communications. No, I just thought it fucking looked cool. Oh, hey, don't align art. The person that actually made my channel art. You see that channel art? Yeah, 
They made it. My question is, have you emotionally recovered from Chainsaw Man Episode 8? Because I know I have it. No. No, I have not. Ever since you once said I need a blunt for my react. Oh my god, where is this going? I wonder, do you have like a really funny stoner moment you like to tell? Or will you ever just do a vid for shits and smoke? <laughs> oh no, I won't. Oh hell no. I ain't smoking on camera. But I do have a stoner story. So one day, me and my friend Travis, you're gonna hear this guy's name a lot because me and him go way back, best friends forever. We did music together, grew up together. We're still talking, we have group chats, and I hope those group chats never leak. So one day, when we were like 18, 19 years old, we decided to smoke some weed under a bridge. We didn't know this bridge was a restricted area, because we usually go here. We just bring our skateboards, we just talk, listen to music, or we just rap freestyle under the bridge. Turns out, the night before, a girl was uh, R-worded down there, and yeah, the cops found us under the bridge, and we were arrested, and I was high as a duck and i had a hoodie on and the cops wanted me to take the hoodie off and i had a i had a shirt on that said the high life i was definitely in the clouds that day because when i got home my mom oh my god she whoo you know that wasn't funny then but it's funny now do you plan on reading berserk it's referred to as the best manga but the anime adaptations suck apparently i never really watched it myself but i never heard anything good about them either besides the soundtrack which you should check out sometime i'll check out the soundtrack god damn yes as far as the manga goes you should stay tuned for a video i have coming up that will talk about my first manga experience i think you'll be happy i heard the adaptations aren't that great the anime adaptations because they can't translate the storytelling and the art that were depicted in the manga because some of that shit is gruesome as fuck and just wouldn't be accepted i heard that or it's just not that great the animation in general for the animes i heard i could be totally wrong what do you guys think let me know if i told you that the chainsaw man anime will have many and more shocking moments like this one oh really Really, just like when everybody's like, you're not ready for this episode every single fucking week. Do you think it will beat AOT and take the first place as your favorite anime? Oh my god, those are fighting words. I'm at the point where Attack on Titan is my firstborn child, but then Chainsaw Man is my newborn. You know what I mean? And I'm never having kids again. So it's just these two kids, right? You have the firstborn child. It's your firstborn you love it to death. You will kill for it. And there's good memories. It's amazing. And you're not just being biased. At times, you probably will be because it's your firstborn. And then you have your newborn baby, which is like me and my family. My brother was the firstborn, but I was the newborn little bastard, and I became the favorite. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like right now. Where Chainsaw Man is that newborn baby, and I've grown very familiar with it. I could relate with Denji, a lot of us can. I love the characters, I love the animation, the storytelling, the action, the depth of of the, the character development, everything, the music, everything about Chainsaw Man is something I'm really loving and I don't see it falling off. I see it getting better and better. So I believe you when you say there's more and more shocking moments because that's how I see it. Every week it shocks me. I don't need a big death to happen. Do you think you'd ever go to an anime con type venture and do a meet and greet type thing with your fans? I loved Anime NYC so much. I loved Anime Expo, especially when people came up to me and just knew me and they said my videos made their day, that they love me. That, oh my God, that was out of this world for me. Honestly, God, I love you guys so much. So yes, 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 yes to your question. Yes, yes, I wanna go to all the cons. I'll be at the Anime NYCs, the Anime Expos every single year and more conventions that I could find, definitely. Holy shit, I said a question, not a PowerPoint presentation, bro. I'm sorry, I got two and can't decide which one to ask, so I let you choose if you even answer a single one. I'm gonna answer both. Because I love you. Out of the anime, oh, anime, Avatar The Last Emperor, The Teen Titans, etc. Included if seen, you have watched, what superpower would you want and why? I've always wanted to be a firebender. Like, imagine someone pisses you off and you just have the power at your fingertips to burn them alive. That power is better than anything. Plus, you could do tricks. You could be like Fire Lord Ozai and fly. Maybe I'm a lightning bender too. And I can, I can shoot lightning at my fucking fingertips, man. Hell yeah. I don't want to be an airbender. I don't want to be a monk. 
and go bald. The fuck I look like Saitama. Saitama's an airbender. I don't want to be like him. Similar question. Which antagonistic or evil organization person, Marley, World Government, Light Yagami, or L, do you hate the most? As in, which would truly get under your skin to the point where you actually root against them more than any others? <laughs> That's a great question. Wow. I hate the government. Whatever they're involved in, anime, especially like in Death Note, even in Chainsaw Man, you have the government. I hate the government. Even in real life, I root against the government every chance I get. So the government, are you working on your anxiety issues? You know we love you, right? So don't stop believing in yourself. You've got what it takes. You will make a great streamer. So resume it. We will support you all the way. Love from Bangladesh. Bye. Pasta. Oh, God, I'd eat you up. My anxiety... It definitely calmed down. In the past, I wouldn't be able to go to conventions and walk through crowded people. Now, I was fine. I just act like myself. I had to learn that my who I am is perfectly fine. And I didn't have to go about it the way I did, where it took all of your love, 800,000 plus of you saying you love me and subscribing to me, it took all of that for me to love myself. And that's the wrong way to go about it because it showed me that it's in me all along that I have the power for others to love me as long as I love myself. As long as I'm myself, I don't have to be anybody else. So I guess that's what helped me was learning to love myself and not pretending to be like anybody else. So that's what helped with my anxiety. And now I could just go outside and wear this fucking hoodie and look like a jackass wearing this walking through the city without any care in the world. Since you have created this energetic vibe in your reaction, does it ever tire you or reduce the enjoyment from watching the shows? Because you have to react in a specific way. P.S. You're my favorite reaction YouTuber. You're just saying that. Before I did my anime videos, like before February, that's when I started my anime journey on this channel. I never edited. Like, you know how I do the zoom-ins and everything? I never did that. I put on a Taylor Swift song. I do my normal intro. Hey, guys. Taylor Swift today. I love her. And then I'd react to the song. Say my thoughts. Outro. Done. No zoom-ins. No edits. No jokes. I was just like, yeah! <laughs> that was good! It was just some boring shit like that. And it got a lot of views. I wasn't being fake. But I was being a, a, a version of myself that I hated. Like, no effort. Corny. And I'm corny still. But it's the corniness that I like that I am right now. I was a cornball then. Like, I wanted to fucking punch myself in the throat. I love what I do. I love that I include jokes when I do my reactions. I'm not forcing it. I'm not cutting. Thinking of a joke and like, alright, Makima... Uh, woof. Like, I'm not like that. It just, it's, it's just comes off the dome. You go on my Patreon, there's no cuts. Sometimes there are. If I say a word that I shouldn't have, yeah. But, that stays in the group chat. Some people say I miss things, and I do. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. I'm sacrificing missing or seeing all the details for entertainment. And a lot of people won't like that, or some people won't like that, but I love it. It's personally what I enjoy doing. I love being different. You know, I respect... All my peers, some of them I don't respect, but there's a lot of reaction channels, probably ones you watch. They don't do what I do. And I could proudly say that. I could confidently say that. They don't do the jokes. They don't try to put comedy and entertainment into their things. And let me let me bust the truth out. Every reaction channel is faking something. Every single channel you watch. Because if you're watching a reaction channel, if they turned that camera off and they were watching that same thing, this is how they'd be. Uh, not even that noise that I just made. That would be the whole reaction channel. All these reaction channels like, oh shit, oh Denji, oh! Bro, they're, they're pushing it out of themselves. But not like forcing it. But we're, we're, we're trying to be entertaining, you know? We're pushing out these emotions that we're keeping inside when we're alone. You know, when we're alone, we're just enjoying it, sitting back. It's like you go to a movie. You think when I see a Demon Slayer movie, I'm like, Chatano! Ar, 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 ar. You think I'm going crazy? No, I'm just sitting there like this.
It's part of being a YouTuber. It's why I believe I've made or I've earned your subscription. It's because I'm different. And I pride myself that way. You recently shared on your Instagram that you'll be visiting Japan early next year. March, by the way. How do you feel about jumping into a new and different culture? Do you plan to prepare? Like learning a few words to make sure... Oh, yeah, definitely. Make sure I don't get lost. Definitely. Definitely. I want to be respectful of the culture. I joke when I say I'm going to get off the plane and call everyone a back. Dosta. I'm not going to do that. Okay, that's a joke. I'm going to be very respectful of the culture. Before I arrive in Japan, I want to know words. I want to learn the basics. So when I go to a restaurant, I'm just not like this. And I love Japanese culture. I've always loved it, even before anime and manga. All right? Video games, music. I've always loved Japanese culture, especially with video games and Nintendo. Oh, my God. Nintendo fan since I was a literal baby. So Japan is my dream destination. And another thing you guys probably don't know about me, Godzilla. Nintendo and Godzilla were big parts of my growing up, my, 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 my adolescence, my childhood, everything. It was just, I love it. I still watch it. I love Go Gojira, and I cannot wait to experience that stuff. Plus Studio Ghibli stuff. I love Studio Ghibli, so I can't wait to see all this stuff. Now we have anime. Add anime into the equation. Imagine how I'm going to be in Japan. I'm going to go there for like two weeks or three weeks. Hopefully three weeks or a month. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. And I want to meet you guys. So we'll plan that when the time comes. But March. March 2023. Nicholas Light comes to Japan. Do you get goosebumps when you rewatch a clip from an anime that you loved? I have ADHD too. And I'm so happy to see someone who reacts to anime the same way I do. Oh, God. Oh, don't get me emotional. I love you. Oh, my God. I love you guys. There are three scenes in anime so far that have hit me on a different level. And I'm not saying other scenes are not good because some scenes that I've seen are God level. But these specific three scenes just transcended my brain and my soul. Number one was Attack on Titan, the whole Aaron Kruger thing, the way that episode ended with him mentioning Mikasa and Armin to Grisha while they're on top of the wall. That, that scene will, I think it'll forever be my number one. Maybe not forever, but it'll stick in my heart like a firstborn child. Second, another Attack on Titan scene would be the transformation scene. And it's not even them just transforming, it's the casualness. Oh, yeah, so we're the Colossal Titan, the Armored Titan. Like, the casualness, it was so different. That's what I like. That, even just saying it, I gotta rewatch it. Three, the Chainsaw Man episode just the other day, or two weeks ago, actually. Everyone dying, dying. Makima, Gobeni, Denji, Hameno. That took an anime that I was already falling in love with, or already fell in love with, and just made it, like undying love like unconditional love like i'm a simp for this now so those are like my top three scenes right now that really what gave me goosebumps give me goosebumps continuously if you had to organize some of the anime and animated shows you've watched recently on your channel into a top three or five list how would you rank them attack on titan chainsaw man vinland saga but vinland saga and chainsaw man all three of these positions could switch up right in between each other, but those are my top three, definitely. How would you say your life has changed over the course of this year? Love your videos. They always cheer me up if I'm feeling down. Keep up the good work and take good care of yourself. Thank you, Rabbi Ghoul. I love you. My life has changed 100%. Before this year, I was living with my parents. I didn't have a car, or I had a car, but I was my brother's, so it wasn't mine, and I drive his car everywhere. I wasn't making that much money because I was doing music reactions and all the record labels would take that money. So I wasn't making any money up until like 300,000 subscribers. I didn't even have a Patreon. So anime, I was able to get my apartment. I'm working on getting a house. I bought my, my Tesla. I sent my, my parents on a trip to Venice. It changed my life. I'm doing smarter things. I'm smarter with my money. I'm a smarter person. I'm growing every day. And next year's going to be even better. But anime, I feel like i found my lane. I feel like i found somewhere I could be myself. And it's only going to get better and better. If you think you've seen the best of me, 
You're fucking crazy. Have you genuinely enjoyed every anime you reacted to, or have you continued some series solely for the channel? No judgment if so. Just curious. Love the videos. Hope to see more OP reactions soon. Alright, so Demon Slayer already went over where it got me a little confused during some parts of it because I was like, why do people love it so much? But then it got me back and I understood. Death Note, after one of the alphabet letters die, it took me off. It took me away. Like, I had to push myself to do those, I guess, last 10 episodes. And it was better. It got better towards the end. Like, those last two episodes I loved. But the whole thing went mellow and near. Ugh. Ugh. I honestly had to force myself. And I'm not saying I forced to my, what I was feeling and what I was saying. But I had to push myself to do the reaction. Like, to actually sit down and react to it. What was it like having to switch from so many types of reactions and the fandom they come with? As far as anime goes, there's a lot of fandoms in anime. It's like music. You have the Taylor Swifts. You have the Ariana Grandes. You have the Shakiras. You have the Attack on Titans, the Demon Slayers, the Jujutsu Kaisens, the Mushuko Tensai's, the Re-Zeros, the Sword Art Online's, the Hentai's, the um, Haikyuu's. You have so many different animes and everybody wants me to check out their favorite anime and believe me, I appreciate that. And I got overwhelmed for a bit. I was like, damn, there's so much and I don't want to get burnt out, but I don't want to upset anybody. I don't care anymore. Now I'm like, I'm going at my own pace and I'm going to react to what I want to react to and... I'm going to give stuff a chance, though. I'm still going to give stuff a chance, but I'm not going to be overwhelmed. Because that's when I lose fun. That's when this job becomes a job. And I don't want this to be a job. This is still fun for me. And I want to keep this fun. Because the second the fun is out of it and it becomes a job, that's when I, I go to UPS and I work there. What is your workout routine? Because you're looking really good lately. Thank you, Ray. Also, do you have any tips for people who are trying to work out and get in shape? Well, if you saw me in the middle of this year, I was getting a little plumpy. I was in a depressive state, and I gained about 40 pounds. I was getting fat. My face was fat. You go back on my live streams on Twitch, those videos that I uploaded on YouTube, I was getting fat. I've Since I've lost all that weight, still losing weight. It's all about routine, and I tell my friends this all the time. Get yourself into a routine. Don't go to the gym tomorrow at 8 a.m. and then the next day skip and then the day after that go at 10 p.m. Don't do that. Have a routine. Monday through Friday, I'm going to go 8 a.m. before work every single day. Start that routine. You do something for 30 days, it becomes part of you and you're never not going to do it. Okay? So forge a routine when it comes to working out, when it comes to an eating plan. Have a certain window in which you eat. Only eat between these times. Eat at the same time every day. Forge this, and you're going to be happier. You're going to see improvement and keep track of everything. So routine and keep track of everything, definitely. Not saying you have to weigh every fucking grain that goes into your body, but just keep in mind what you put into your body. What qualities do you think make a really good anime? As in, what do you look for in anime if it's going to be a favorite of yours? All right, let me answer that one first. Characters. You have to have good characters. Because a lot of film, a lot of video games... You have a good story, but the characters suck, and it just takes you out of it. You need someone that you could stand behind or stand against. You need somebody like that. For example, Airbender, last Airbender, you had Zuko. I feel like that's one of the greatest written characters ever, but he's such a great character. I don't look for these one-dimensional characters that are one note, like, oh, he's bad, twirling the mustache, that's it. I, I hate that. It, it, it's cringy to me. It takes me out of it. I like when there's depth in the characters and it feels real. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying they can't be animated in their expressions or in the way they feel and think. But just just don't be one note. I hate one note. And that just doesn't go with characters. It goes with everything. I'd love to know who your favorite characters are from some of the stuff you've watched. And what type of characters you tend to like the best. I love Saitama. He's funny. I can relate with his dry humor, and he's not even trying to be funny. That's the humor and the magic of the show, the love of the show, the heart of the show. I love Saitama, one of my favorite characters. Zuko, I already praised Zuko. I think he's number one for me. I love Aaron. I love how he makes mistakes, and we see him make mistakes. We see him lose. We see him win. We see him doing the wrong thing, the right thing. He's a, a real person that I feel like if I was put in his position... I'd act 
similar similarly similar uh, fuck i don't like perfect characters the characters that are just fucking perfect i hate them i hate people that act like that they think they're everything they have everything that they are everything that they're all powerful i hated kids like that in school so the perfect characters i don't like that definitely takes me out of a story or a character i love denji honestly it's it's like a kid and i can relate with a lot of his qualities even now i'm sure a lot of us can titties Honestly, jokes aside, Denji, definitely Denji. Final thing, this is just my own curiosity, but would you ever consider doing a video where you try to draw anime characters? No, no, you don't want that. You know what? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to draw Saitama. There's my art. That's as much as you're getting from me. Rate my art down below out of 10. There we go, rate it. How do you have so much energy in each and every video? You never seem low in any of them. You're the most energetic and fun person I've seen online. Oh, God, I love you guys. I do my videos after the gym, so I'm pretty hyped up on pre-workout. I take a lot of pre-workout before the gym. I know you shouldn't, but I take, like, two scoops. And then I have coffee. I swear to God, I'm gonna have a heart attack on camera one day. But to be real, I have fun with it. That's why. I can't fake it, you know? It's the only thing that makes me feel alive that I feel like I'm good at making people laugh, smile, have a good time, taking them away from their thoughts or their bad day just for a few minutes. That is what keeps me energetic, knowing that I'm good at it. And I'm not forcing it. It's just what I love doing. It's like people love drawing, love skateboarding, love making music. I love entertaining people and making them happy. If you were born in Japan and decided to start a writing manga, what's your initial plot gonna be about? All right, well, why do I have to be born in Japan? <laughs> like, I can't write. Wait, could you, read could you write manga if you're not born in Japan? Do people write manga if they're not in Japan? I don't even know. Guys, let me know. But all right, say I, say I was born in Japan, okay. Decided to write a manga. All right, so let's pretend I actually have talent. I'm born in Japan. Oh, so I'm so I'm superhuman, because that's what I believe every Japanese person is superhuman because they're so fucking smart and talented. Number one, it would be about a bird, a bird just like Chantaro. It's a bird that you can't pick apart from any other bird, right? It won't be like a main character bird. He won't have a scarf. He won't look different. He'll look like every other damn bird that's in that damn country. But that's the point. He has to stick out. How do you stick out? in a world full of birds, full of life forms that look exactly like you. So that would be the plot, finding what makes him different. Which road will he pursue? We follow the birds when they fly south. Do they fly south for the winter? Wherever they go, wherever those fuckers go. Does he follow those birds? Or does he go his own way and risks starvation? You'll have one arc where he follows them and there's like bully birds that pick on him because he's getting a little fat and and, and he's taking all their food. The next arc, he's like, I don't want to be a part of these people anymore. Or these birds, my bad. I don't want to misidentify. I'm going to go my own way. And he flies away. And he fucking dies. Tell me if you'd read that or watch it. Put it down below. I might write it, actually. Do you still plan on watching Haikyuu at some point? There's not Rush at all, since you're already watching so many shows right now. But if you do, then I think it is a great first anime that has nothing to do with powers or supernatural things, and it's just about some high school volleyball. I love you, Nick, and keep up the great ball. I love you. I think when I do a first sports anime, it will be Haikyuu. I'm definitely, or Haikyuu, I'm definitely interested in checking that out. And I like that, that there's nothing superpowers or supernatural. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I feel like you need a balance. You know, I like watching different things. Maybe I want to watch an anime about romance, who knows? Or an isekai or whatever. Like, I want to watch different genres within anime. I feel like that is how I will grow as an anime, as a weeb. I'll actually be a weeb. Right now, I'm still in training. Got my training wheels on. I'm a little bitch. What is the most aesthetic show you have ever seen? Also, what is the most tragic scene you've ever seen? Aesthetic? Studio Ghibli films? Nothing beats that aesthetic. But if we're talking anime, I really love the Jujutsu Kaisen aesthetic. Don't get me wrong, Demon Slayer, the animation is next level. Especially the last two episodes of season two. Next level, that shit blew my asshole. But Jujutsu Kaisen, I just love the overall vibe of it. Especially with the opening and the ending, with the train and everything. Just the, the show in general. I love the aesthetic, so I'd have to go with JJK. Most tragic scene. I feel like Attack on Titan takes that too. With Grisha screaming in a performance where Eren's 
talking to him. Tatakai! Like when he's when he's talking to him when his face. Y'all know the meme. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That scene. Wow. But then I'm thinking about the Vinland Saga scene. Thorfinn on the boat in like the first few episodes after Thor's dies. Spoiler alert. Have you seen any Studio Ghibli movies? I've seen them all. I wanted to enjoy something animation-wise by myself, all for reactions, and that's what I did with Studio Ghibli. One day this year, I just watched all the films in like two sittings. My favorite one is Grave of the Fireflies. I watched that on a plane. I was coming from Hawaii, and I just put that on the plane, and I was tearing up in my, my flight seat. I was tearing up on that fucking plane, man. God, people were definitely looking at me like, what the hell is this kid watching? I'm watching death. That's what I'm watching. What's the most important lesson you've learned from one specific anime? <laughs> Don't trust these hoes. That's what Chainsaw Man taught me. One Punch Man actually taught me something. It's that it's okay to be weird. It's okay to have dry humor and not make sense. Spy Family taught me that uh, my life sucks. I'm never gonna have a family like that. Attack on Titan taught me a very valuable, important lesson that I'm never gonna forget. A lesson that I was taught before, but didn't really fully believe in until I watched the anime. You see Gabby, you see Eren, two different worlds, but they were both affected the same way, but it was by each other's nations, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, Eren was attacked by Gabby's people, Gabby was attacked by Eren's people, and then we all learned the truths and the what, who is who and everything, and towards the end. But that hatred, like Eren understanding Eren, Gabby trying to understand him, and then Eren or Mikasa and Armin understanding Gabby. You know what I mean? Like, just two different sides. Everything's not black and white. And I like that. And I always understood that. But it made me understand people differently. Like, why do they act this way? Everything's not black and white, unless it's just pure fucking hatred and pure evil. Then, nah. Last question. It's not really a question. Wow. So much for the last question. But I just wanted to tell you that you are one of my favorite YouTubers of all time, like top three and top one favorite reaction channel. Why am I not your top three, your top number one in general then? You make me laugh at every single video you make, so thanks. I love you guys. Well, whether I'm your favorite reaction channel, one of your favorites, or you fucking hate me, thank you for watching this video. If you hate me, why would you even be at this part of the video? You would have clicked off and disliked the video by now, you know what I mean? But if somehow you hate me and you're still watching, I love you. So too bad. This was different. Y'all get to know me more, you know, outside of the craziness and all the reactions. You know, I'd like you to know me more because you guys are the biggest part of my life and I love you so much. How many times did I say that in this video? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for saying I love you so much. Oh, and Merry Christmas. This is your gift. Getting to know me more because <laughs> I am the gift. Mm -hmm.